Oh, I'm going crazy. I've tried making this video like three times. So what's going on, YouTubers? This is Buddy coming at you another quick video. Every time I get, I start making this video, my phone rings. It drives me nuts. All right, so this is Buddy coming at you another quick video. Today we're going to talk about nitrates, problems, and solutions. And this was actually supposed to be the part two video, but I'm going to make it the part one video because the video that I've already uploaded on nitrates, problems, and solutions really should be a part two video. We need to d discuss this stuff first before we ever discuss that. Uh, first video that I uploaded so with that being said this is going to be the part one video and that won't be the part two video all right guys so we're going to talk about a couple things today that could lead to nitrates and we're going to refer to just poor water quality so instead of me saying nitrates and phosphates we're just going to say poor water quality all right guys so the couple things that could lead to poor water quality and is inadequate flow an aquarium that is overstocked too much of a bio load for your filtration to handle an overfed aquarium, inadequate live rock, so inadequate filtration basically, and not a properly sized or properly tuned in protein skimmer. And this is um, what I think are the biggest components to leading to poor water quality, and in turn, it's just poor tank setup. So let's, let's talk about um, proper water flow. Now guys, keep in mind, if there's anything that you feel you should, that should have been added to the video, please leave it in the comments below so we can make these videos as educational as possible for people. So just say, oh, we should have mentioned this, and, and, and mention it in the video in the comments below. So when people see these videos and they read the comments below, um, they're getting as much information out of it as possible. I think uh, all of us YouTubers need to start working together to ensure the success of this hobby long term. Um, instead of criticizing, I think we all need to work together. Because uh, if we don't get this hobby turned around, it's possible that this hobby may not be around. Um, if you do some research and digging, you'll see that um, there's plenty of lawyers out there trying to ban the sell of fish and corals. Um, they're really trying to turn this hobby down. That's a whole other video. Let's get back to nitrate problems and solutions. First one is inadequate flow within your aquarium. Not having proper flow within your aquarium can lead to dead spots. And that is going to allow detritus, fish poo, fish, uh, fish food, fish poo, detritus, to build up over time. That's going to, inadequate flow is going to lead to dead spots within the aquarium, and that's where all the detritus will settle. And over time, that detritus is going to build up and lead to terrible water quality. So having adequate flow within your aquarium, proper flow in your aquarium, is very important, guys. I can't stress that enough. Make sure you have good water movement in your aquarium. Now, on num number two, we're going to talk about making sure, actually, let's talk about live rock first. Um, having inadequate amount of live rock for the size of your aquarium or having live rock that is too packed tightly together. If your live rock is packed too tightly together, the water cannot flow within and around the live rock properly, and that can lead to dead spots as well. And that will lead to detritus to build up, and in time, lead to poor water quality. You have to remember that your live rock is one of your primary filters. So if the water cannot flow within and around the live rock properly, your water is not properly being filtered. You're not utilizing your live rock properly as well. So really take those, take that into consideration guy, uh, too, guys. Um, number three would be an aquarium that is overstocked, that has too many fish in it for, for the filtration that you have to handle. Too much of a bio load for your filtration or your size aquarium. Now, um, where, what are we on? Number four, uh, overfeeding. And I, you know, guys, I don't know where, this, where people um, got this from, but your fish don't need to eat a Thanksgiving dinner every day. You don't need to dump in a ton of food at one time to feed your fish, your fish would actually more benefit from smaller amounts of food fed more frequently throughout the day than just dumping a ton of food in the tank at one time. That's actually just more or less going to lead to poor water quality because the fish aren't going to be able to consume all that food at one time and it's going to get trapped within the holes of your live rock. And I, even with adequate flow, I honestly believe that um, even with adequate flow, it can still get trapped at the base of the rocks where they touch the sand. Now, if you have uh, changing motions, the water's changing through the aquarium throughout the day, you know, say, or if you just have power heads, you know, kind of placed on the back wall and on each side of the aquarium, you know, that's going to give you more of a dishwasher flow and less likely for that detritus to build up at the base of the rocks and within the crevices and holes because the water movement is changing. So that's why I think um, having that type of uh, changing flow within the aquarium throughout the day is extremely important. Now, with that being said, I'm a big component and a big believer in stirring the sand bed. Um, 
I still love to stir the sand bed. I think that's very important. I do it weekly. Some people will disagree with that and say if you have adequate flow within your aquarium, um, your aquarium's not overstocked, you don't overfeed. Basically, good tank husbandry. You don't need to stir the sand bed. Um, that is true, but I still am a big believer in stirring the sand bed. I think it's very important. Now, keep in mind, if uh, you have a poor tank setup, oh, oh, we got to touch on protein skimmers. Um, another thing that could lead to poor uh, water quality is having an inadequate sized protein skimmer for your aquarium or having a protein skimmer that is not properly tuned in properly. So make sure, I always like to oversize my protein skimmer. I have a 65 gallon mixed reef. My protein skimmer is rated for a 120 gallon aquarium. Um, I think going a, a, a size bigger is uh, very important. That's, that's my opinion. I like to go twice the size of my display tank. Like I said, my display tank is 65. I got one rated for a 120 gallon aquarium. Uh, protein skimmer. So making sure you have a properly sized and properly tuned in protein skimmer is very important to making sure you do not run into poor water quality, nitrates and phosphates down the road. Now we'll touch on phosphates. Well, I like I like to run a phosphate reactor. I'm just going to throw this in there. Um, I like to run a, a phosphate absorbing media. I think that's very important. Um, now there's a couple there's a couple ways you can run it. Basically three that come to mind right now is you can run it through a phosphate reactor which is supposed to be the most effective way to run phosphate media but you can also simply take a bag of phosphate media make sure it's uh... and take it and stick it in the back of a hang on back filter make sure it's packed in there good so the water is forced to go through the media instead of around it so you want to make sure you pack it into the bag and make sure you pack it into the hang on back filter good so the water is forced to go through the phosphate absorbing media and one another way is you can make sure you put it into a high flow area of the sump where the water has to pass through the media. Any anywhere that the water is going to pass through the media, you don't want to take a bag of phosphate media and throw it behind a rock in your tank. That's going <laughs> to that's not going to do any good at all. And then say, "Oh, well, you know, I threw phosphate media in there and, I, and I'm not seeing any difference." <laughs> well, you know, the water has to pass through pass through the media for it to be effective. So keep that in mind, guys. Okay, well, I forgot where I was going here. Oh, I'm a big component of stirring the sand bed. I'm a strong believer in stirring the sand bed. I think it's very important, guys. I really do. That's my opinion. I like to do it, and I also like to do weekly water changes. I think that's very important, too. That's one of my biggest things, weekly water changes, and I stir the sand bed every week. Now, keep in mind, if you've never stirred your sand bed before, you have to do it very small amounts at a time. You cannot just go through and stir up your whole sand bed because that could lead to definitely lead to some serious issues. Uh, you know, if any organics or, or, or detritus has built up in your sand bed over time and then you stir it all up at one time because you've never stirred your sand bed before that's going to kick a lot of uh, 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 a lot of uh, organics into the water and that could lead to some serious issues so you want to do it very slowly until you make it through the whole sand bed and then you could start doing it when you do your uh, regular water changes or your tank maintenance um, so yeah make sure you don't do that you don't want to do that all at one time guys you don't want to just stir your stir your whole sand but up one time that could lead to some serious problems all right guys um and one more thing if you if you do if your aquarium does end up with a nitrate problem guys try to figure out why you have a nitrate problem instead of just carbon dosing or something like that you know you, you really want to figure out why that is i mean what is the problem that led to your poor water quality um do you have inadequate flow do you have an overstocked aquarium are you overfeeding do you not have the proper uh live rock within your aquarium is your live rock packed too tightly together do you have a lot of dead spots do you not have a proper sized protein skimmer i mean get to the bottom you know find out why you have you know is your, is your um sand bed that is holding detritus due to the fact that you have inadequate flow within your aquarium uh and you have these dead spots you really want to get to the reason the the reason why you have a nitrate problem you know instead of just saying i'm just going to carbon dose take care of my nitrates screw it you know, I really don't recommend you doing that. I really recommend you getting to the, the root of the problem. And a lot of times, the root of the, the biggest problem is it's incorrect tank setup. Your tank is not set up correctly, and it has led to poor water quality down the road. All right, guys, if you have anything else that I should have mentioned or anything else to add, definitely add it in the comments below so we can make these videos as educational for people as possible. So if there's anything that I left out that you felt like I should have touched on, leave it in the comments below or with a, with a description of you know what it is that whatever it is that I should add it with a description so when people see these videos and read the comments they're as well educated as possible guys 
Um, if we don't start to fix this hobby and, and make people be more successful, this hobby is not going to be around much longer, guys. If you do some researching, you will see that there are a team of lawyers out there trying to ban the sale of corals and stuff, guys. They really are. They're trying to make it very difficult for us um, as time goes on. And probably within the next two years, there's going to be some bills passed, some laws passed, where they're going to prohibit the buy and sell of certain corals. So we really need to we, we need to get our our stuff together guys we need to start being more successful we need to start helping each other more instead of being negative towards each other we need to we need to make this hobby better um, so if there's anything I left out definitely please leave it in the comments below so we can make these videos as educational as possible and try to help people out as much as possible alright guys this is buddy signing out please hit that like and subscribe button thank you and happy reefing